Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Prehistory in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous patrons and my channel members from our sister channel over at History in the Dark. You are the reason why this content remains underwater again. Why do I always wind up here? I don't know why I can't avoid the water, but today we will be discussing one of the most famous extinct species of shark in the history of paleontology. That's right, I'm going to be talking about the Big Chungus, the Alpha, the Omega Megalodon. And why it's definitely 100%, I can't state this enough, deceased. The Megalodon is extinct, and it has been extinct for a very long time. And yet some people on the internet don't seem to understand this. And it's something that I feel like I need to address before I say anything else. Autodus megalodon, or just simply megalodon, which means big tooth, is an extinct species of mackerel shark, also known as lamniforms, and they lived between 23 to 3.6 million years ago. So they occupied quite a large span in time, in case you hadn't noticed. They were originally thought to be very close relatives of the modern-day Great White Shark, but further research has actually put them under the classification of the extinct family Autodontidae. That family diverged from the Great White Shark during the early Cretaceous period, and because its relationships to other sharks has been very debated upon, and any remains we've found of it are very fragmentary, its exact appearance is still somewhat of a mystery. When it was thought to be a close relative of the Great White, most artists rendered it as a very, very big Great White Shark. But it's also thought it could have looked a lot like a whale shark, a basking shark, or even a sand tiger shark. It's pretty much impossible to know for sure without more conclusive remains. And even then there'd be some guesswork involved. Its exact size is also hotly debated. We know it was really, really big, but exactly how big it could get is, again, very difficult to say. Sharks don't have bones. They have cartilage that makes up their skeletons. It's the same organic material that makes up your nose or ears. Now, it is possible for cartilage to fossilize, but it's much less likely to do so than bones are. And usually the only parts of cartilage that would fossilize would be the very dense components, such as the jaw. As a result, getting solid remains of the megalodon is very difficult and therefore size estimates vary wildly. Everyone agrees they were huge, but some estimates suggest it was about 16 meters, or 52 feet in length. But higher estimates will put them over 20 meters, or 67 feet long, and weighing up to 103 tons. Again, it's very difficult to know for sure when the remains are so fragmentary. The only thing anybody seems to agree on is that they were really, really big, and terrifying. Their bite force has been estimated, and it's believed their jaws could have exerted up to 182,200 newtons. Another thing that differentiates them from Great White, as again, people constantly associate with them even though they probably weren't that closely related, is that they didn't hunt like them either. Unlike a Great White, which tends to come up towards its prey from below and get at their soft underbelly, like when whites attack seals, Megalodon probably attacked from wherever direction it wanted to, their jaws could easily break through their prey's chest cavity and puncture the heart or lungs. There weren't very many other creatures that could deal with a megalodon back then, and it's believed that juveniles of the species would hunt very close to shore, and as they grew, they'd move a bit further out, feasting upon early whales. But the question is, why do people think they would still be alive? They lived millions of years ago, from the early Miocene to the Pliocene epochs. They're not even close to present-day animals. Well, I think there's a few reasons, and for one, I think people just find them very cool. They are just big, big sharks. And the thing about the ocean is that it's very mysterious and massive, and we find new species all the time, even some species that were long thought to be extinct, like the coelacanth. This causes the gears in people's heads to turn and their imaginations run wild, the notion of a big, giant shark still being alive somewhere out there. But the fact is, if it was there, we'd know about it. It's too big to hide in its normal habitat. They had a cosmopolitan distribution. They were all over the world. Someone would have seen a 67-foot-long shark. It would have happened at some point. Because again, they were coastal hunters. They were in the exact area where human beings are predominantly. So the notion of us missing something this big is simply insane. But, you say, prehistory in the dark. 
don't you understand? The Megalodon is no longer a coastal hunter. They retreated into the deep, dark abyss of the ocean floor, hiding and waiting to emerge and take back the oceans for themselves. Okay, yeah, see, that's not something that happened at all. Somebody's been reading way too many science fiction novels, and I will explain why. Now, on one hand, deep sea gigantism is totally a thing. In zoology, it describes a tendency of mostly invertebrates and sometimes other deep sea dwelling animals to be much larger than their shallower water relatives. A good example of this would be giant and colossal squids. So the idea of a very, very large creature, even a predator, existing in the deep abyss of the ocean is not that far-fetched. It could totally be a thing. There may be something else very large that is deep down in the water that we haven't discovered. But I promise you, it's not a megalodon. It can't be a megalodon, because that is a completely different habitat from where the megs were known to operate. They were surface hunters, coastal swimmers. They did not operate in deep, dark water. Not only would they have to deal with much lower light, but they'd also have to deal with the cold, and part of the reason the megs died out was due to oceanic cooling. Not to mention the extreme pressure changes, you know, the pressure that will kill a human being if we go too deep in the water. The Meg was in no way adapted for the amount of pressure you'd deal with the deep sea. And I know where this conversation is about to go, but prehistory in the dark. This was millions of years. What if the Meg, having to respond and changing conditions in their normal habitat, had to adapt and change their habits and move into deeper water where it was safe for them. And they now wait and plan. And soon they will emerge again and strike? No, no, that is not. Okay, let's play this game. Let's actually take this thought and use it as a way to explain why that is totally not a thing that happened. Let's say you're right. The Megalodon at some point decided to shift its habits. It began hunting in deeper water. It began to operate in cooler temperatures. And over time, evolution took its course. The species adapted. The ones that could handle the changing environments survived while the older ones died off. And slowly but surely, the species moved into deeper and deeper water, but somehow retained their immense size. Okay, let's say that happened. There's one key problem that I don't think you are considering. If it went through that many evolutionary changes, if it altered itself in such a way where it could handle the lower light, where it could handle the lower temperature, where it could handle the immense pressure of a deep sea environment, it wouldn't even be considered a megalodon anymore. It would no longer be Otodus megalodon. It would be an entirely new species. A descendant of megalodon, sure. A related species, absolutely. But it wouldn't be the meg in the way we think about them. And if it went through so many evolutionary adaptations to be able to function in that deep environment, it could no longer so easily move back into the old environment that the original Megs used to operate in. They couldn't survive in the shallower environment anymore. So I guess what I'm trying to say is this. If there is a gigantic, big, 67-foot-long shark somewhere in the ocean, I promise you, it's not a Megalodon. I'm sorry that I had to play bad guy on this topic, but there's just no way this thing is still alive. Not nowadays. And honestly, let's be real about this, do we really genuinely want that? I mean, look at this thing. I don't really want to live in a world where when I go to the beach, I have to be worried about getting swallowed whole. Bitten by a shark is one thing, but if I'm swallowed, I don't even really have a chance of surviving that, you know? It's just one of those things. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.